Okay, here we are back on the Hammond Leslie amplifiers. We are working on the oldest unit. Hopefully we have this one about wrapped up. I replaced the burned resistor in the power supply that was caused from a bad leaky filter capacitor and I replaced several other resistors that were out of tolerance as well as some old paper capacitors that needed to go. Also the fuse holder was damaged so I had to replace that and I cleaned the chassis up and we were about ready to run the smoke test on it. I have our power cord in position as well as our test speaker so we'll plug it up into the variac and bring it up very slowly in case something is wrong. Maybe we can catch it before things go up in smoke. Now these resistors I know look very small. They look like half watt resistors. But according to Mauser's website, these are indeed 2 watt resistors. So let's hope they know what they're talking about, because I'd hate to have any setbacks. I really need to get these things fixed and get them out of here. Okay, I think we have Leslie number 1 fixed. Uh, I replaced a bunch of capacitors that were original equipment that needed to go. I replaced some resistors that were either burned or out of tolerance. I replaced the original plug-in filter capacitor can. Now my intent was to buy individual sections and wire them up under the chassis, but unfortunately individual electrolytic capacitors that are rated higher than 450 volts are a little bit hard to find these days and when you do find them they're a little pricey so I just went ahead and ordered an original equipment newly manufactured multi-section filter capacitor can which is a direct drop-in replacement for these amplifiers I replaced the motor control relay the original one had uh, burned contacts from 50 years of use I might could have salvaged the original relay, but I want this to be as reliable as possible, so just went ahead and replaced it. And I replaced the diode that's in the relay control circuit. Here is the original diode that checks wide open. Uh, actually, this may be a selenium rectifier. I'm not sure, but whatever it is, it checks wide open. And I had to replace the fuse holder because some dimwit had broke the original. So now I think this one's ready to be installed back into the organ. Okay, we're back together. All our voltages check good. And you can hear we're passing an audio signal and all I'm doing is touching the input with my test lead from my meter. So the next test is for the customer to put it back in the Leslie cabinet and see what happens. I think it'll work just fine. Oh yes, and I did replace this uh, solid state 5U4 rectifier tube replacement with an original 5U4 rectifier tube. Later versions of these Leslie amps had solid state rectifiers, but this one was designed for a tube rectifier. And with this solid state rectifier in place, our B plus voltage was about 50 volts higher than it should have been. And that may have contributed to some of the component failures that took place in this amplifier. And another thing, these solid state diodes will short which could burn up your power transformer. I don't recall ever seeing a shorted 5U4. I've seen some weak ones, but never a shorted one. So I just decided to go back to the original tube rectifier and leave this solid state one alone. Okay, now let's move on to Leslie number two. Okay, now here's Leslie amplifier number two. This is a much newer, newer unit than number one, so I don't think it'll have as many problems. Now we'll flip it up and I'll give you a recap on what I found initially wrong with this thing. First I found a one and a half amp slow blow fuse that was blown. 
and that fuse is actually wired in series with the main fuse holder here that's user accessible and the reason they have this fuse here is, is in the event some dimwit uh, decides to put a 20 amp car fuse in this holder then it'll blow this fuse instead of burning up the amplifier and I noticed this resistor that's open here burned open and there, are, there were two Zener diodes wired in series across this terminal strip two 50 volt Zener diodes and one of them was leaky so I'm going to replace both of them and I could tell where the two diodes were tied together the junction was kind of burned looking so I don't know whether it was not soldered good from the factory or what the deal was and also this cathode bypass capacitor for the output tube looks like it's been a little hot actually the thing is uh, stuck to the chassis so yeah I'd say it's gotten a little hot we'll want to replace that and hopefully once we replace those parts this amplifier will be good to go okay I, ha I have now replaced the two Zener diodes here this resistor that was burned open a 470 ohm according to the schematic this fuse and the cell phone shack didn't have one and a half amp slow blow pigtail fuses so I just simply soldered a couple of leads onto a standard fuse and I replaced the cathode bypass capacitor for the output tube now this cathode resistor here electrically still checks okay but part of the ceramic coating is starting to or the ceramic body is starting to flake off due to it getting so hot over the years so I want to make a trip to the parts house tomorrow and hope and pray they have one in stock because I want to go ahead and replace it just to ensure maximum reliability but I think we're to the point now where we can run a test on this and make sure everything else is operating okay about this amplifier and testing the original cathode bypass capacitor it's supposed to be a 220 microfarad it's only reading 82 microfarad so yeah that one definitely needed to be replaced and checking this capacitor on the old ICO cap bridge uh, this thing has an extremely high power factor in today's terms that would be high ESR we're at about 60 percent which is extremely high okay we have our speaker connected as well as our power cord we're plugged into the variac or the variable isolated AC power supply and we're going to bring it up slowly just like we did with Leslie number one hopefully we'll be good to go I don't want to see any smoke I don't want any problems I just want it to work okay looks like we've got this one going all our voltages check good And I've already replaced the crumbling cathode bypass resistor with a 270 ohm resistor from my junk stash. So it looks like these two Leslie amplifiers are ready to be installed back in the cabinet. And hopefully everything will work out fine with them. If you see another video on these, you'll know something went haywire. If you don't see another video, then you'll know everything was good to go and everybody's happy. Okay, there you go. Thanks for watching and more to come later.